Oh crud, guys! Oh god, we're we're crashing. This is this is terrible. Hold on. Oh, never mind. This is probably a trap. Anyway, we're going to talk about how this has a high potential to be a trap because of this signal right here, our crash signal, seeing a massive bounce while everyone's distracted what is happening with the final pullback from NVIDIA that we said was coming, but very difficult to play. Now we are seeing that the retail traders might be convinced that we are going to see some kind of crash, and that might be the exact moment we turn back up. We talked about how the SPY was going to be probably more complicated than just cross over on the MACD on the daily and everything is gone. So this is a trap that is forming and we're going to talk about that first off as we get into after that. Some stock market analysis. We're going to do some technical analysis on the SPY queues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, and Meta going forward, looking at GME and AMC as well, because I think that is the overall thing that is causing such a big problem right now. So let's get into it. Now, before we get directly into the SPY, which we need to get our drawings up. That's important, but we need to talk about the one thing that we were calling, right? We were calling there would be some kind of downward price action here because a crash signal was flashing red. Now that would be XLU, that would be the utilities. And we've already told you guys multiple times why this is a crash signal. Um, if you guys need to figure that out, there was a video, I think I believe it was last Saturday, I put out of why this is um, overall pointing down. And we noticed live that this was tearing down while the market was trying to hold up and it caught back up by the end of the day. So this is a very good signal. But the actual crash signal is when it makes a divergence and the SPY makes that divergence at the same time. So what are we seeing now? Our crash signal is actually bouncing here which tells me if this is bouncing and uh, the other thing would be in the dollar, we're going to talk about this just a little bit and the dollar is coming down while the market is actually going down. That's actually a signal that this could be some kind of big trap forming. Okay. So just keep that in mind with our technical analysis and we're noticing Nvidia selling off just like we said it would. Um, now it's very hard to play. So we didn't know ex the exact timing on that, but we knew that they would take profit most likely to cover their short selling positions to force down GME and AMC. And we're going to talk about that as well. So let's just hop into the spy first off, uh, going down into a, I think we're just going to go with a 15 minute chart right now. What do we need to pay attention to right here? Well, we have some new daily expected moves. So don't think this can't continue. I'm not saying this can't continue. Um, I was kind of relaxed when I was talking during the closing live video that I did. And if we see some craziness, I might do another closing live video tomorrow um, to really talk to you guys about what's going on here and show you guys how you can use these signals. We said overall that this was going to be some kind of trap. IWM really told us about that. We can take a peek at that. But what are we noticing right here? This looks like a divergence that is formed down here on the 15 minute, okay? So if we're going to see some kind of trap here, we're gonna have that 15 minute divergence confirm. I know we get news in the morning and it's very dependent on this news. Don't think this can't continue. Crazy things happen outside of that weekly expected move, but I just find it interesting that we're just keeping up with the tapering and this really isn't anything too dramatic at this point. You're even having some stocks in green like Apple and Tesla, so we could be seeing a rotation from Nvidia, but I just wanted to point this out to you, the 15 minute. We do have a solid divergence here. Now, this has not confirmed. You need that to confirm to be a contrarian and say, there's a green bar, I'm a contrarian bullish signal. And then if that goes back to positive, then we're right back into a positive trend. And the reason that I'm paying attention to this is because, well, I have some daily expected moves. Let's tell you about those first, 526.01 to the upside, and we do have 519.21 to the downside. So these daily expected moves have been spreading out every single day. So volatility is increasing but volatility actually with this low on the SPY actually made a uh, lower high for volatility. We'll talk about volatility as well. So we do have this divergence here. The reason that I want you to pay attention to that is because of XLU. XLU is our crash signal. We use this in order to find where there was going to be a pullback. And we said that pullback is coming for NVIDIA and everyone talked trash on me. People came into my live video and said, NVIDIA is up. You are stupid. This is dumb. Why are you saying this? And I said, because of this right here, we're most likely going to see NVIDIA's trap maybe even set up another one because we're going to go make a point of divergence on X XLU. And we just paid attention to the signals. We saw the two hour divergence. It showed us a crossing of the MACD right back here. We went a little bit higher, weren't able to confirm a higher move for XLU. And this thing started to drop off. And this has done this the last two, two to three crashes. We've seen this with XLU, but I want you to see the difference between the SPY and XLU right now. Uh, we're seeing a massive up and upward move that is causing the two hour to cross up and you're right by that positive territory. So the reason I wanted to look at this was because of the 30 minute divergence. And this is why yesterday I was saying this, this price action looks wonky. I believe it's some kind of trap and it is a trap. It is just forming right now. So what are we noticing here? We do have a 30 minute divergence. We have that divergence on the MACD and RSI at the same time, which led me to believe this is going to bounce. 
And so I woke up very early this morning and I told you volatility was going to create a divergence and we were going to bounce. Uh, right now, we're forming more of a bear trap, in my opinion. Now, that uh, that stuff has to prove, okay? That's very important to understand. It's not just, oh, someone on the internet said there's a trap, so therefore it's a trap. No, those things have to prove in order for that trap to be proven. And at this point, what are we noticing about XLU? This is a signal to pay attention to. Why is XLU, why is utility seeing this big run up again and the SPY has been following utilities and the SPY is not doing that as of today. And we'll talk about the dollar of why this is most likely insiders actually buying the dip, suppressing it to make that call side cheaper for them because they need to make some money to cover uh, GME and AMC positions. So pay attention to XLU. The reason you have to pay attention to it, I just showed you the two hour curled up. If the two hour is able to curl up for the SPY, it's a little bit deeper into negative territory down here, but it's still close enough that just like four hours of positive price action you're going to see a big move up. So we do have the opportunity with some news possibly to gap above our daily expected move and see a rapid move higher. And then I would very much though, I'd really be on your toes for any kind of rollover on the two hour up in this area. We'll be talking about that live. Now, before we get into the cues, it's gonna be a similar thing, um, but we wanna point out the daily expected moves. That would be 455.37 to the upside, and we do have 447.73 to the downside. So if we do see downside early on, this is going to be a great support. You have two expected moves. You have the monthly and the daily, but let's not think that this can't continue. Remember, this yellow line here is the monthly expected move for the month of May, and we have a 68% chance to land back in that zone. Now, the other side to that is, we have a 68% chance to land somewhere in here. So I believe that the best area for tomorrow to land would actually be here based on the percentages. Uh, but if this two hours is able to curl up into positive territory, look where it is. It's right by the center line. This is what we call a pullback. And then if that curls back up, that is when the momentum indicator is telling you there is more upside left in this overall move. So we'll be paying attention to this. Uh, but the main thing to pay attention to here is those daily expected moves. And you can get all of the daily expected moves for every stock that we cover on this channel, including Google, Microsoft, AMC, GME. You can get those daily expected moves in Patreon. The link's in the description, as well as the course that's $100 for one more day. If the craziness continues, we might extend that, but I highly encourage over the weekend you dedicate yourself to some learning because this market is very hard to trade in and you're seeing my skill in real time, uh, paying attention to XLU, and it looks like we have a trap on our hands. Apple, those daily expected moves, right? We're going to pay attention to those over on Patreon. But what are we noticing here? The MACD for the two hour is still positive, is still green in positive territory. So you're still in a positive trend, but there is weakness here. Okay. So in order for us to get bullish here, we really need to see some positivity. And I'm going to go into a 30 minute because this right here is a triple divergence, but um, you're still within positive territory. You were never able to rule negative. So going into tomorrow, you still have to say the edge is to the bulls for Apple. And this is starting to look like it may either you know, cross down and go negative, or we may see some kind of pullback. But if that does not go negative and that crosses back up on the 30 minute positive territory, if that crosses up at any time, you can see upside. Now we wanna be careful in these areas because that two hour divergence we've talked about for a few days can form up here. We'll mention it again live because plenty of people are asking about Apple here. But what does Apple like to do? Well, it likes to burst through a zone, touch in it, touch in it, touch in it. Notice we're still getting those higher lows and then maybe we see some kind of actual breakout here. We'll pay attention. This might be reliant on the data and this might be a stock that they're rotating into from NVIDIA right? We know that the dollar is dropping off while the market's dropping off. So that should mean that the insiders are actually buying something or not going cash anymore. So they're buying something. Are they going into TLT for a crash? We'll have to see. But overall, I would say maybe there's like, why is Apple's remaining at these higher levels if we're experiencing an actual stock market crash? And I believe they're telling you the wrong info. We'll get into that when we get to the yields. Tesla was very complicated and we've talked about how Tesla is a very complicated trade. It's a very difficult one to trade right now because you're not getting solid confirmations. You got one dip down here that said, hey, I might go negative. Then you flip right back to positive. So as of right now, there is an edge to the bulls in the 30 minute chart here because you're in positive territory in a positive trend. And you notice this wick up is very important here. Tesla, another one that is holding up at lower levels. I wonder if we're rotating into that. But at this moment, what do we notice? We haven't curled over on this MACD. So they're not curling over on this MACD. Now, if that happens first thing in the morning, okay, negative trend. We just wanna pay attention if that's rotating up at any time. Remember, we trade like water on this channel. We are always willing to flip-flop based on these signals. Now, let me just peek over at a two hour and you'll notice this. This is why I think Tesla has a higher 
higher probability of going up. The 30 minute is in positive territory and it's green on the histogram for the MACD. And what are we noticing down here? RSI above 50 for the two hour and the uh, MACD is crossed on the two hour and in positive territory. So that is a pretty good confirmation that there's going to be some kind of upside here. I'd really be paying attention to my daily expected moves tomorrow. Watch out for any kind of pop and then that just rolls right back over tomorrow because we're gonna have to be careful. But this could extend if this is going to be some kind of trap, this could extend for a few days. Amazon has been a rough one. This one was ripped away. And this is one that we talked about live at a, as a risk management. This is why you always have to manage your risk. If you take the play on the 30 minute, first of all, we go into shorter time frames on the uh, course in the course in the description to show you how to get out of a trade when you know something bad can happen. And overall, we're just going to do it on the 30. But no, in the course, it's a little different than this. But right here, if you're looking at a 30 minute chart, this bar right here at the end of yesterday told you there's no reason for upside here right? You're getting a crossing down of the MACD really close to the center line. That should convince you, hey, this thing can go negative, And that's exactly what happened. This is where you need to manage that risk. Don't get excited and think everything has to go straight up forever. There will be pullbacks, but this 30 minute needed to reject that and remain positive. It crossed over your risk managed. Now, if this would have turned back around, you just would have wanted to see the MACD turn back up and you can be right back in that move. It's perfectly fine. That's how we learn about these indicators. Okay. Right here, you were told, hey, there is a negative move possible here. I'm really close to the center line and look at that negative move come in. We still have divergences down here, right? All the way across the way, uh, but they're starting to not look the best, right? This one's a little bit further away. It's still kind of close, but a little further away from the center line. You do have it down here on the RSI. You can see it down there on the RSI. You can see those flat divergences here and an upward divergence between this point right over here. So I wanted to pull up a two hour the two hour here is what I'm overall paying attention to because this is divergence on a two hour. And if we see a bounce early on in the morning, what if this two hour confirms that actually could flip over the daily for a second. So we could see an extended move from Amazon, but I still think based on the two hour chart that we're probably going to see a lower high here. Now that is a probably we will keep an eye on this to make sure we know if that is rolling over. But just note here, if the two hour goes positive, just pay attention if that curls over, right? The last time we just showed you the 30 minute, how you could have gotten out and not been a part of any of this and the, and the signals were telling you that. Just let the signals tell you what to do. If this crosses up, we have a good shot to go positive, but this is a lot of work to go all the way back up to this high. So it's either going to be some kind of extended move or we're just going to get a lower high and I'm really leaning towards that right now and I'll be paying attention to Amazon managing my risk if I wanna take a play on this. I'm just being very careful to upside moves as XLU might be creating that divergence soon. So the risk says, hey, there's a crash signal forming. Why would I try to buy stocks when a crash signal is forming? Now we get to talk about Nvidia and I'm so glad to finally see this play out. You know, it could have taken even longer. This could have just continued for a longer time, but it ended up seeing some weakness here. And this is the weakness we were talking about at the beginning of the week. We said, yes, the craziness can continue. Yes, the craziness can continue. But just know this is the opposite of AMC and GME. This is the real meme stock. This is the stock they're trying to get you by above a thousand, eleven hundred dollars, above eleven hundred dollars. This is the stock they're trying to get you to buy above $1,100 and then they're going to rip it away. The big boys are going to rip it away and no one really, but I mean, a lot of people who have followed me for a long time and, you know, have been a part of this channel and we've built that trust. They say, yeah, I can see it. And I just go, you know, the new people show up, the people who are Nvidia, you know, fans, I guess, I don't know, are just like, it can never go down. And I'm just saying to you right now, this is people trying to short it. So I'm not trying to short this. I think that we do have the opportunity to turn back up here, but it does sell off. So the people who came into my stream, hey, I love having you there. You're still welcome there. Just don't be a jerk on a stream to any streamer. Okay. We're putting our time into this. Most of this work I am doing for free on YouTube. So uh, just, just don't be a jerk in the YouTube. We can have a difference of opinion and be just fine. Now, what do we pay attention to here? The 30 minute. If that crosses up into positive territory, then this was just a trap. And I'm, I'm really thinking this is a move like this will convince everyone to short it because the stock is so high. So if this is able to base out or something like that, that would be great. But we do have to worry about another bearish thing. If, if we do cross, we do have potential to make a high, go take and go make a new one. 
right? Test the high, make a new one. But we do have a potential here to see some kind of handle form and then that just fails. So if this 30 minute rolls over at any time tomorrow, we'll be notifying you live about this. But NVIDIA, you just know the main rule we were talking about when talking about stocks, the number one rule that everyone knows is buy low, sell high. And this stock is very, very high. AMD, if this starts to roll over on the daily, then yeah, we might have something bad, but you haven't lost the 50, you haven't lost the 20, you're above the five. You haven't lost any of your moving averages here. So I don't get why we're so bearish. And if you're paying attention to XLU, you would just like kind of laugh at this like I was at the end of the day, being like, the probability that this is a trap is very, very high here. But if AMD, if I'm wrong and AMD is going to roll over and this isn't some kind of trap or it's maybe a more prolonged trap, we're going to see this roll over negative territory. Now, that's a bad thing because you would test the low, maybe maybe go make a new one unless you're able to hold up at this zone. So we'll pay attention to this. Uh, but as we go into the shorter time frames, I want to show you the 30 minute. This was able to roll up and it never rolled over by the end of the day. Now you're seeing that downward in the post market, but a lot can happen before then. This looks like a flag. So if we do cross over on the 30 minute, guess what? Negative territory is there, right? We're negative territory if we cross over on the 30 minute to the downside. Look out for 160.83. I still like that level a lot. But what would we notice? What if there's a brief diversion, something like this pops up? That's what we mainly talk about live when things are happening in real time. But what are we noticing here? It didn't cross today. So that means I need to wait. I need to get more price action. If this sees some kind of downward move, okay, the direction is down for a little bit and I need to pay attention to any kind of reversal. Because if this just turns right back up, if this goes into positive territory, that means positive trend. And I think what we're going to see here is the 30 minute minute might look wonky down here, but I think we might see a little divergence pop up right in this area. And then that would give you a 30 minute divergence here. And the funny thing about getting a 30 minute divergence up in this area would be you would create a two hour divergence maybe as well. So if this is going to take a little bit more time, you might even create a two hour small triple divergence for AMD. And this is one that I'm going to take a play on live. I'm going to show you the exact times that I'm entering these trades if this does form. So AMD, what am I looking at here? Well, the two hours still in positive trend. The 30 minute is right near the center line. So there's nothing really that bearish happening here. 30 minute, you could say is 50 50 going into the morning, but the two hour you're still in, in uh, bullish context here. You're still in a positive trend. And this is beating down to the center line. If that curls up, you know, hey, that's a big move. But watch out for divergence because that could be very, very bad. And you already have one divergence, by the way. That would be triple divergence, right? We already have one right here. So looks like some weakness coming for AMD, but it just might not be right now. Meta did something big, and this is a little bit different, but we're going down into the point where a lot of traps have been made, okay? We see a trap, we see a trap, we see, we go to the upside, we get a trap, we go to the downside, we get a trap, we say, oh, we're going bullish, nope, it's a trap, we go to the downside, we get a trap, we go to the upside, we get a trap, now we're in the same area for a trap. So if this is going to be different, I would say we need to actually close below 463.76. I think this level right here, very good to pay attention to, um, and one thing is, Meta is bearish on the uh, two hour, just a little bit. It's right by the center line. So if this just wants to curl up, we could see that extended move. And then we'd want to watch out for any kind of sell signal that we see up here. Okay. Any kind of bearish signals. The 30 minute, you're, you're down in negative territory. When did you know that there was going to be weakness in this move? Well, way back here is where your risk management should say, hey, just be a little careful. You might want to wait for that 30 minute to curl back up. That's how we read into these indicators. I'm just teaching you about these indicators real quick. If you stay in positive territory and you curl up, what happens? Well, we see positive price action, positive territory, positive price action. If that then rolls over briefly, right? We roll over, we go negative, negative price action. What do we notice right here? Well, we went negative actually on this, almost pretty much like the start of this bar. We were negative right before the close yesterday. And then the next day, that negative trend shows itself. So there it is right in front of you. And don't be fooled. A lot of these moves down, people are saying is because, oh, we could have to raise rates. We could have to keep rates higher for longer. All the data we got today, a lower, a slowing in growth. A slowing in growth means we do not need, uh, the, the rates actually will come down. And that's what you're going to notice. And then the jobs number actually said the rate should come down. And then the, uh, the housing sales number actually said the rates should come down, but the media tells you, you should be scared about rates going higher. And so this looks like an overreaction from retail. And I think that, you know, retail has taken the bait pretty well here. And if a lot of people have shorts here, I, I'd just be a little cautious if this 30 minutes starts to curl up and go positive, because that could mean the positive trend is continuing here for Meta.
Since we talked about yields, let's just talk about it for a brief moment. I want you to see the reaction from yields. The media, and I clicked on this and on the spy, and it was overall saying there is inflation, there's there's yields going higher, scares in the market, and that's why we're dropping down. And I said all, and I said this live. I said all the data is saying this should drop off, and we said that before the market opened, before we got the data. I was like, if it comes in at consensus for the GDP, the 10-year yield will drop off. And that's exactly what ended up happening. We got more data and it, all of it pointed towards yields dropping off. But the media tells you that the data said, I don't know if they said the data said that we should have higher yields. I don't know if someone said something, but uh, just know the data is telling you that the yield should come down. And that's exactly what happened today. Don't be fooled. So what's that doing for TLT? Well, we're seeing a bounce, right? We're seeing a pretty good bounce here. And uh, this hasn't curled up on the two hour, but TLT, the smart money going up. The SPY going down, like even though this is heading down, this already headed down for a while. The SPY could catch up to this and then bounce, right? We could still be forming that trap on the SPY. But what are we noticing about TLT? Well, on the two hour, if we curl up and we get into positive territory, we might see us break through this channel and those yields might come down dramatically. So something bad might be around the corner to cause uh, some kind of dropping of the yields be necessary right away. I don't know if it's bank liquidity because of all the GME AMC thing. I don't know if it's a hedge fund liquidity. I don't. It could be anything at this point, but most likely it's going to be bank failures that lead into people rushing towards TLT and we have to drop off these rates. So we'll see if that plays out. We're going to keep an ear to the floor on that one, but let's go look at the dollar and talk about this for a second. So everyone telling you, Everything's horrible. It's all selling off. The spy is dropping. That's weird. The dollar should be up here then. Why is the dollar down here? Well, over here, we mentioned how the dollar was going up while the market was going up. And that is a signal that insiders are selling. And then this is the dollar going down while the market is going down. Now, this could be for a few reasons. It could be maybe they are, you know, buying stocks, right? They maybe they are buying while the overall spy is selling off. That is the indication here that this could be some kind of a trap. But this also could be, you know, maybe they they need to go liquid to pay for some stuff for AMC and GME. Maybe they are flight to TLT right now. We don't know what this could be, but at this point, you know that insiders are buying something. And the market is going down at the same time, telling you that the insiders are uh, buying something at this moment. So what are we going to talk about going forward? We're still getting into GME and AMC at the end here. But this is the signal that I posted this morning. And this is what I said in my video last night. I just overall said um, I, I we only had this amount of price action. I said I need more, but I think we're going to create a divergence up here and we're going to see volatility drop off. And that's exactly what ended up happening. Now, the market went lower but the volatility did not end up higher. So that is something to pay attention to. And notice it's right by the center line. So if tomorrow we get some news, maybe this does go up a little bit higher and then that starts to fade, we'll pay attention to this because we could see volatility roll over and then you would say, yeah, this, this is a trap at that point. But it's very dependent on the data. The bear trap could be still being formed. And if utilities rolls over, maybe it's not even a trap. So we're still open to every scenario, but this is the mo most likely thing right now is that this is a bear trap. Okay, now I thought it was important to see all that before we talk about these right here. And what are we noticing? Well, they're really being pushed down. They're really being pushed down. And we told you that they were most likely going to sell stocks in order to be liquid to force these even further down. The more that these go down and we see other little ones popping and popping and popping, the more I'm convinced that these are the big guys because why are they trying to suppress it so much? So what are we seeing from AMC? Let's just look at it from a technical st technical standpoint. You notice we lose 437. We get it as resistance, resistance, resistance like three or four times and we're turning back down. Now this is selling off, but we'll have to see what happens going forward. Okay, we have to see what happens going forward, but you have the 15 minute. It's close to the center line, but it's just not the best look, right? It's not very close to the center line. And I'm gonna tell you right now, GME looks completely different. GME looks better than AMC. Uh, but we need to talk about this because first of all, you need this to go positive, right? If you're if you're thinking this has to bounce with some kind of divergence down here, that's fine. You're getting tapering, I get it. But this here, you are still a contrarian bullish signal right here because you're still in negative territory. You're still in a negative trend. So all this has to do is keep rolling over until you actually get to positive territory. That's when you know that this stock is back in a bullish positive trend. And I wanted to point that out. We do have daily ranges uh, for AMC. And because those daily ranges are small, people are thinking like, no, the move has to be way bigger than that tomorrow. 
It doesn't. If it is going to see a short squeeze, that would be something unexpected. The area above the, the daily expected moves, above the weekly expected moves, any expected move is a 32% chance to see something unexpected. So if you do see the short squeeze from AMC and GME, it will be something unexpected. It will be outside of the weekly and the daily expected moves. So popping over to GME, the reason I wanted to talk about this one, even starting off on a 15 minute down here, you were a contrarian. This is a contrarian bullish signal. It is still bearish because it is in a negative trend, but that's where a contrarian would say, hey, I'm thinking about grabbing this. Okay, now it is positive. So GME is actually in a 15 minute positive trend. GME is in a 15 minute positive trend going into tomorrow. And that is kind of a huge deal because if this stock remains higher, they lose tons and tons of money. And I think that's why we're overall seeing a sell-off is because they have to pay for their borrowed shares. Now, the 30-minute as well, in positive territory, crossed up green bars. This is the momentum saying right now the momentum is positive and the momentum is up. Now, that can change very quickly. That's why we trade like water. So if this rolls back down at any time, then that's not the moment. But if it rolls down and rolls right back up, this one could be the moment. You want to trade like water. You want to manage your risk. You want to move back and forth. Being a flip-flopper in politics is bad. But being a flip flopper while trading is the best thing you can be. And just lastly, on the meme stocks, I'll just show you AMC is positive as well. But I just want to show you on the daily side, this is how you know GME is dead. If this is able to fully go negative on a daily chart, that's when AMC or GME and AMC are dead. They are nowhere near doing that just yet. They're nowhere near doing that just yet. OK, so don't let them convince you that this is dead. They're going to keep posting. Sell your GME, buy NVIDIA and look what happened. They told you to sell your GME, they told you to sell your AMC, and then buy NVIDIA, and they're going to rug pull you, trick you, and then get you to sell it, then they'll buy it back. It's just manipulated. They're manipulating the stock. But this is how you read the momentum here. If GME turns up, crosses on this MACD, it's in positive territory, so what happens? Positive move uh, for GME and AMC if we can cross up in positive territory. Okay, so the main takeaway here is there is a lot to pay attention to. This is a very difficult market to trade in. I think someone with... Uh, even my amount of skill can really struggle. You can see how I was a little bit hesitant yesterday to call that out as a trap, uh, but now I'm starting to really think it is as XLU, our crash signal. It's pretty much, if we were crashing, why is our crash signal bouncing? That just doesn't make sense to me. So I think they're forming some kind of bear trap, and I don't know if it'll play out tomorrow. They're, they're really playing with the market at this point. And they're really screwing over retail traders right now more than I've ever seen before. So uh, hopefully we can get some updates with more price action. Maybe we can see the spy catch up to XLU. That would make the most sense because if XLU continues up in positive territory, it could go, could go make another high up here. Maybe it even makes a two hour divergence before that starts to fall down. And we'll pay attention to that because this is our overall crash signal and it's bouncing right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Just a note here, the course is still $100. If you want to ask about it, please come live tomorrow. Come over to the channel. Come live in the morning, and we will talk about that course with you. Plenty of people have taken it. They can tell you how it's helped them. Uh, and if you want to join the Patreon for those daily, weekly, and monthly expected moves that are about to update, that's down in the description as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Wish nothing but love and health to all your families out there. And I hope you guys have a great, great night. Peace.